103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, August 1st, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, hello, everybody. I'm hoping you guys had a good week. We're being bombarded by rain. I know it's worse in other places. You know, I'm tired from A to Z. That's why I got my A to Z bar. Get your Z bars available to you at a local shop. Z bars, proud sponsor <laughs> of the show and everything about atheism. Z bars, get your Z bars. All right, go for it. Um, that is tongue in cheek. We have no real sponsors, but I'll try one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with us today, our, our special guest is Swedish Steve. Say hello, Swedish Steve. Hello, Swedish Steve. We're going to get back to you with a little more detail from where you are and details of your land in a minute. Um, say hello, Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome. Oh, Dread Pirate Higgs. Mm-hmm. And George Brown, two and a half. Hello, everybody. And not to forget the John Richards out of England. Say hello. Hello. Uh, I did the voice for him because that's how he was muted. Yeah. But he's muted. Yeah. It's okay. I spoke for him. It's all good. Okay. Uh-huh. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, well, what are we going to be talking about today? Hey, we're going to be talking to Swedish Steve all the way in Sweden. Talk about an international show. Uh, but before we get into the details and the meat and the potatoes and our own Z-Bars, who are proud sponsors of the show, we have our own Dread Pirate Higgs with our weekly invocation. Arr, noodly Lord, who art in a colander, El Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we put up with those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Amen. Sweetest Steve with the most confused face. We're going to get to you. No, I, I've seen it before. <laughs> hey. He's got the holy hand grenade. That's what I want to know. Dread Pirate, are you putting away any fires? There's, a, I mean, there's some pretty bad wildfires going on. Have, have you been helping out more with that? I see you got your... Uh, yeah, I'm, your I'm actually up here in, in a place called Spence's Bridge uh, in a hotel room. Um, I'm on my second week. Uh, we'll do two weeks rotations. Um, and it's just we're protecting uh, essentially community assets and, uh, you know, um, helping out the firefighters in whatever way we can. Man, that's And uh, there's right now apparently about 172 wildfires around British Columbia uh, and, of course, many more across Canada. Wow. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's just been a dry year. Um, we had that uh, early uh, heat bubble, which really dried everything out well before our typical heat bubbles come. Um, so, yeah, we've been upwards of 40-plus degrees Celsius. Wow. I don't know. That translates well over 100 degrees it does uh, Fahrenheit. It does for me and Jonathan because um, we're both scientists. Doubter 5, military guy, he should know. If you can do the conversion, it's helpful. But, yeah, I think we know it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's over 100 anyway. So, But, uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. And uh, um, I just got off shift. Uh, so, uh, I'm glad I can make it here. Yeah. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, you know, in California, it's already beginning to have orange tinted skies. So like, what's the question is like, wow, what's coming down from up North, but, but thank you for being at the forefront and wish you the best of luck. You're doing the God's work. Mm. You're doing God's work. Right. Uh, <laughs> George Brown. Quab's Quab's work. Quab's work. Quab's, oh. Quab's work. Praise be to the noodle. George Brown, got a question for you. Your 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 fidelity, your bandwidth, your clarity is coming in so well. How are you improving your internet? What's your tips for for people out there? Mind taking yourself off mute before you start talking, my friend. Well, you see, the only thing I did is there we go. There we go. Help them out. Yeah. Um, 
It, it is the case of the only thing I did. Um, I, I have been availing myself of uh, telehealth medicine. That means that means uh, healthcare over the internet. Interesting. And um, so one of the platforms, platform services that I've been using, um, gave me a link to a new um, test. And let me see, I can tell you all the name of the test. It's called speed of dot me. Okay. And it shows latency and latency was my problem. Mm. And, and uh, the thing that fixed it, it, believe it or not, was simply rebooting the router. You know, it's the secret weapon of all IT support. It's like, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? Ah, uh, isn't that great? <laughs> you know, yeah, great. and I should know, I should know better than that. But so I, I, I learned, and yeah. it, it fixed everything. Nice, nice. It's a code green. You know, it's funny. I love how even computers need a little nap to just get restarted. It just clues you into like the the minds that made them. <laughs> if anything, John Richards, it's yeah. good to see you. How you been? I've been fine, thank you. Yes, it's. I, I believe that uh, turning it off and turning it on again was what they did to the helicopter on Mars when it went AWOL. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's great here. I've, um, we haven't got any fires. We had a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain. Everything in moderate amounts here. You know. The, the middle way, that's, that's how we should go. Yeah, so was, I mean, is generally England not uh, prone to dramatic shifts in climate? Or We're a bit warmer. We're about okay. 0.9 of a degree, that's Celsius, wow. warmer than, than it was when I was a boy. But that's about it, really. I mean, we don't get snow anymore. We only used to get a, a sprinkling that was gone by 11 o'clock in the morning, mm. you know? And uh, we have, April was wonderful. There was no rain at all in April, but then we had some rain in June. It, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a balmy climate. I love well, it. Speaking, but speaking of weather, you've had to weather some new guests on your show, right? Tell me about how, how that's been going so far. How yeah, is... yeah. Well, I've been all over the internet. I had, um, I, I make my Global Atheist News annual, um, annual weekly show, yeah. which, yep. which is... Both of these shows are on my Free Thought Productions YouTube channel. Yep. And the other one is Free Thought Hour. And my guest this week, this is where I interview somebody and we have a chat. And my guest this week was a guy called Bruce Garenza. Who... Was he the one with the suspenders? Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Braces, please. Sorry. Oh, is that? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's, he's got a fine beard. Uh, really... Yes, he does. Father Claus, uh, Santa Claus, Father Christmas type of beard, mm. and a yellow hat, a straw okay. hat. Yeah, mm. and we had a lovely. He's a lovely guy. He's right. an ex-pastor, who is now an atheist. He converted from being a pastor in about two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. His wife, of forty-three years, went on the same journey with him. Wow, that's useful. That that Absolutely. that's a good story. I need and stuff yeah, like that. Well, you need you need to go to Free Thought Hour on what do I call it? Um, can't think of the name of my show. <laughs> Free Thought Productions, mm. and you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Also, uh, I highly recommend Global Atheist Network. Right. Uh, check that out on YouTube as well. Global Atheist News. Yes, Global Atheist that's... News. Global Atheist yes. News. Check that well, I've out. I've also been guesting. I've been on other people's shows too because uh, I now I now join in with an Atheism UK podcast we didn't manage to do it this week for various reasons but it's supposed to be a weekly podcast which is like this it's a few blokes talking together nice and i i was also i'm co-hosting harris sultan who uh, stop stop john richard you're doing too much you're only one man what are you gonna do well i'm retired so i, I have <laughs> nothing else to do <laughs> yeah 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 okay okay that's great you're you're really putting yourself out there and uh i know i know if you're making it sound easy but i know it's hard to schedule and find the right times and then maintain you know like good conversation maintaining good conversation about important topics in a way that's captivating for people to listen to is a difficult thing and so yeah uh you're doing good work and i enjoyed your interviews i uh even the guy with the rainbow suspenders i was like all right that's a good thumbnail i'm gonna have to check this out you know that <laughs> Yeah. Daughter five, would you mind if I just check in with you real quick, sir? 
How have you been? Sure. Oh, fine. Um, just staying in, staying on the internet, doing some gaming. Nice. My ice maker just went off. It's just as I unmuted the mic. Um, no, uh, the only report or the only thing I have to report from my conversations on the internet was a guy that I was talking to. I, I mean, I really wasn't just talking to him. I just commented on the the line uh, of, on Facebook, and he saw I was an atheist. My answer was an atheist, and came back and said, and I quote, uh, "Your answers is." are thieves and liars who cause mass genocide. <laughs> Where did that come from? Just because well, okay. I'm an atheist? My ancestors were Christian. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he knew something I didn't. I don't know. But um, it just that's the kind of thing. He was from like Virginia. Mm. So, Bible yeah, there's Belt. a lot of fallacies in there. Uh, but, you know, you were, you have actually made some good contacts that you've been gaming with recently, right? Oh, certainly. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do and the one intro? of them with us today. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetie Steve. Sweetie Steve. You and I met on uh, EVE online playing games. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. You and we got to be friends and we wanted to ask you a few questions on the show, if you don't mind. Thank you for coming, first of all. <laughs> but we had, um, we had a believer online uh, saying uh, that most countries were religious and we remi reminded him that there were some that were pretty much atheist countries uh, and we mentioned Scandinavian and he came back and said no we're looking at statistics from the CIA government website <laughs> uh, said that like 65 percent of, of uh, Swedish and other countries in that area were actually believers uh, you live there can you address that for us uh, also talk about yourself for for a oh bit. yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell Sweet us a little Steve. bit about yourself. Because <laughs> you've only said um so far. Sweet Steve. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Who First, are you? What are you about? What's your life story? Tell us thirty mm. seconds. You got it. My life story. Yeah. yeah. Twenty-seven seconds. Oh, I'm Swedish. We don't like those questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Well, uh, at the moment, I live in the woods, but uh, I'm a resource teacher on a small. Uh, school. Nice. Uh, I've never been a Christian or never been part of it in any way. Uh, it's not a big thing. My w wife had a, um, how do you say, a weak moment when she was 13, 14, when she went to school or uh, church. A lot, but uh, uh, she outgrew it. What? She outgrew it. Yeah, quickly. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, and feel free to correct me if I if I overstep, Swedish uh, Steve, because you are the Swedish expert here. But when I was over there, there's tends to be two kinds of uh, religious people: the ones that absolutely, 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 absolutely take it very seriously, very literally. And then the ones who are apathetically religious are just like, yeah, eat the cracker. Just come on, guys, we got, we yeah. got somewhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, it's more like, let's, let's be a little Christian so the church will pay for our funeral. Uh, funeral. Right. It's, there, it's, it's so, hard to find a Swedish person that says, I believe in God. It is very difficult to find a staunch religious uh, yeah. Swedish person. There is, there is. oh, John, go on ahead, go on ahead. I wanted to ask Steve, what's the constitution say? Are you secular? Yeah, we're secular. Good. Uh, we made it public. Uh, uh, first January 2000, but it's been like that since, yeah, uh, yeah most of the 90s. Mm -hmm. George, you got more comments? What's that? Yes, I have a question. Um, what is the prevailing religion in Sweden? Is it the same as the rest of St Scandinavia, or is it different? And how did they feel about the country going secular? Uh, I would say it's not much of um, a discussion. Uh, it's more natural to just be secular and and they can have their little, uh, how you say, parties somewhere. Uh, we don't mind them as much. 
and they don't really care about us. Uh, yeah. It's a so really, are they Lutherans? It's a really ambiguous form of Christianity. Just like, yeah, yeah. There's a state church, and sometimes I go there on Easter, or 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 I'll I'll go there for Midsummer, and it's really nice singing. We got books. Yeah. <laughs> so we is it? it is it Lutheran or is it something else? It's Lutheran. Yeah, yeah. it's Protestant-ish. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Larry, what do you got? Well, I was just wondering, do you face any kind of uh, evangel evangelizing or proselytization there at all? Uh, just the Mormons from <laughs> from you. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, do they come to your door oh, absolutely. periodically? Yeah, Dude, yeah. Sweden is a Mormon heaven for for Mormons. They're like, oh my oh. gosh, look at these people. Uh, Perfect. Oh. So many you get like virgin territory, huh? Yeah, it's just like, look at all these blonde, blue-eyed guys just waiting nope. for the discovery of the truth. Yeah, it's perfect for them. Um, I did want to ask this. Are there... Um, so one of my favorite things about Sweden is metal music. And I'm, I'm going to get to the point. Trust me, you guys. I feel in my head, it comes right off the vine when you go to listen to like Swedish metal. But there are bands... Uh, I would say this, there are bands in Sweden that take it to the next level in terms of uh, displaying and, and showmanship. And there's a band that dresses up like a whole entire Catholic church. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, uh, Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of their sing. so in America, when we do death metal, you might be familiar with like the guttural kind of gibberish yeah. sound. It's like, bruh, bruh, bruh. that in Sweden is an actual language. Like in when yeah. Swedish people do it, like they're actually speaking the language. We're just going to imitate the sound when we do our death metal impressions. So like when ghost is singing, it's like, what's he saying? He's like, Oh, these are the hymnals. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Psalms 111. It's like, that's what he's saying. It's like, that is the most hardcore thing I've ever heard of ever. That's so awesome. Yeah. Ours, but, but yeah. Ghost is really like level one. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's not even burning churches or right, right, stuff right, like right. that. <laughs> <laughs> In his videos, I hope. No, no, no. no. It's, I, it's like, very... I like the way there's different levels of metal. So yes. you can imagine that you know there's lead, and then there's iron. <laughs> <and> then... <laughs> Somebody like status quo, and they're just aluminium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> aluminium. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, hey, so Dread Pirate and Sweden, um, Swedish, you're both basically, and John Richards. Wow, we have such an international cast. It's like even now. It's crazy. Really? Three Tennessees and three. Okay. So the original question I was going to ask was, um, have you had opportunity to go to anywhere else outside of America, Swedish Steve, and got an impression of the culture contrast when you step outside of Sweden and you're like, wow, there's a perhaps a more permeating sense of religion around here than I am when I go back to my home country. Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, I, I can say Russia, ah. crazy religious, mm. uh, Austin, Texas. <laughs> really? Wow. Austin, Texas. <clears throat> yeah. No, in comparison between the two. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that is true. We consider Austin sort of like the Mecca of non-religious Texans, but yeah, compared to Sweden. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, but still, <laughs> they, they seem like all this country, like God, yeah, it's just, it feels weird for me as a Swede to. Oh, oh every street corner has a church on it. Yeah. About... And every every property has a flag on it. Yeah. yeah. Christian yeah. nationalism. Do you have flags on your properties in Sweden, Steve? If we have flags on properties. Do you, do you have, like does houses. everybody have a flag of Sweden mm. in the garden? No, <laughs> we don't like most of us or most of our the you younger people that doesn't like the Swedish flag at all. It's it's just something that um, either fascists or nationalists shitheads. Really? Yeah. Oh, sorry, nationalism. Yes. In other words, 
Yes. You're yeah. you're more likely to encounter someone wearing the British or American flag, but just as a fashion statement, which really yeah. confused me when I got there because I'm like, oh, American. It's like, no, 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 Prata de It's like, oh, okay, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Sorry. Like, Can you help me with this? <laughs> I need some help. <laughs> I don't know where I am. Can you help me? But yeah, uh, um, I want to say, hey, thank you for coming on to the show. Of course, you're welcome back anytime. But I think we're getting close to the bottom of the half hour, Larry. Would you mind taking us out and then we can come back and we'll we'll talk sure. about some okay. stuff. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Salute. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Again, today is Sunday, August 1st, 2021. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, but we are again meeting in person at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City every week, Tuesday evening from about 5.30 to 8. We'll be out on the patio and hope to see you there. Uh, you can find us on Facebook or meetup.com or knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Start right. one. Right. One bad word we want to pick up. So I wanted to just highlight we have a real international cast today. We have represents from England, from Sweden, from Canada. And uh, three people from Tennessee. <laughs> not bad. We got basically the A to Z to the world. And what else is better than A to Z than a Z bar? Get your atheist support. They represent everything that we say in this show. So make sure you get a Z bar at your local place. Get a Z bar, A, Z, Z bar. Is that anything like rebar? <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? Chocolate chip Z bar is my favorite. Anyway, Dread Pirate what? Eggs. You I, want to point out, I want to point out that correctly, that's a Z bar. It's a Z bar. Z bar. A to Z. Uh, Dread Pirate. <laughs> George loved that joke. Uh, you want to introduce him the topic for the second half of the show? Uh, myself? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, just on our, during the break, I, I wanted to talk about uh, how media has um, really recently uh, made death quite the spectacle and and that people are indulging themselves in in grief um you know recently of course there was the uh, discovery of uh, unmarked indigenous graves at uh, residential schools right across canada and while we can certainly all appreciate the gravity of that situation um it was known i mean people knew this was going on for 30 years um, it's just the fact that, you know, it has now become a media spectacle is as embarrassing to Canada as the whole residential school system to start with. I mean, Red, this has been in place for a when good that, long time. Could you tell us when that 30 year period was just to put it in historical perspective? Yeah, well, I think it started in the, you know, the 60s and moved into the 70s, uh, and, it, and it may be long. I, I mean, I haven't, um, you know, delved into it too much, but um, the la I think the last school was just uh, not even 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, the last one that closed, I think, was okay. not very not very long ago. Thank you. But um, like I say, I mean people knew that this was going on and and certainly the catholic church and other churches um have been sanctioned by the uh federal government to to do that so um sorry i, I didn't want to interrupt a couple other comments there yeah john what did you want to yeah, well, go this, this is a little bit of a rabbit hole compared to the main thrust of the subject but yes yeah i, I think they discontinued shipping the um, the natives uh, what is the name they're the ill uh, give me the name of the um, the canadian 
is it no it's not iroquois is it but um no that's america uh, well no there's just all kinds of indigenous populations indigenous. Um, you know indigenous. In, in, in bc alone there's uh probably you know the better part of 50 different nations right so yes, yes. i'll use the word indigenous thanks for that yes yeah but i think i think they stopped yeah. actually um grabbing the children and putting them into these residential schools in the, the mid 70s so yeah I, there I, are people who are still alive who are part of that generation it's yes it's, yeah it's, yeah yeah but I, I think the last one closed it wasn't very long ago uh, just a matter of years ago um but like you say john it's it's kind of pulling away from uh yes. the main subjects i was trying to present yes um like i drive uh, i take a long drive a five and a half hour drive between the and the big city of vancouver along highway and what i see increasingly is the number of crosses that are being erected on the roadsides to mark where somebody's had an accident or a fatality and these things are getting more and more elaborate as people you know um I guess enshrine their grief uh, to to the level that they can afford it, and and so it's now becoming a continuous cemetery, and and this mm -hmm. is what I mean by a death as spectacle or grief as spectacle is that we all we all suffer loss, every one of us, and that you know there's I think there's got to be sort of a, a a point at which we say you know. Uh, we appreciate and sympathize and empathize with your grief, but you have to get through it. You can't, you can't um, make it everyone else's continual uh, responsibility to share that grief with you. Mm. Does or, that make any sense? Drev, could I just add some little yeah. color to that? It, it's not so much get over it and move on. It's more of like, what's the healthiest way that we can actually um, come to terms with the loss that you suffered and is a public display of religious icona uh, the best way to do it for everybody? Or maybe we can seek better therapy, right. maybe we right. can have some better understanding, maybe a conversation's needed, and there might be better avenues to actually resolve this sense of loss that you have than iconography that might be sure. not only potentially uh, used by media to, to, to ap 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 aggravate something that may not necessarily be the intentions of the departed, but actually could be used to further propagate an agenda that nobody wants to subscribe to just because it appears that with the icons that we're using, exactly. we, we are cheering for a particular team. Yeah. George, yeah. did you want to feed on that? Um, yeah, I actually, yeah, response... I mean, exactly. In, in response I just, to you know, and I agree. I, it's not like a, it's, and I'm, I'm not to say that, uh, Sorry. It's all right. There's a little bit of lag. We, we can anticipate that. Uh, George, would you mind uh, filling in? Yeah. Um, uh, I actually, in response to what Dread Pirate has been saying, I had three, three comments came to <laughs> mind. So the, the, first, the first one is that um, I, I want to say that I have long been an admirer of Canadian media. And um, I want to say about the... the um, the church and the unmarked graves absolutely depressed me. And um, I mean, I felt a, a sorrow at, at reading about these children. And, and um, what came to my mind was that your media has been um, very good about it, I, I think. And I, I thought all the way back to, you know, the first revelations of abuse of children by priests in the Catholic Church came out of Canada. Um, it was in Nova Scotia in particular, where the media got onto it. And I don't know how, I'm going back to the, what, the 1990s, I think. So the other thing is that, um, I have lived in urban areas almost all my life, or most of my life. And death as a spectacle, as you're talking about it, Dread Pirate, has not been a part of the urban landscape. I only discovered this when I made a visit to Montana, which is very close to where you live, 
finding crosses on the highway. And I had to ask, what is that all about? When it was explained to me for, for the first time in my life. And this, this of course, marks the spot where there has been a, a fatal car accident. In the cities, we just don't have that tradition. And I thought, why is that? And part, part of this is that people are simply, like in New York, where I grew up, they're just walking to the subway. There, there is no highway, you know. People aren't driving. They don't have highway accidents like this. And um, uh, for some reason, it's, it's just, it's not an urban phenomenon that, I, that I'm aware of, but it has become that. And I think within the black community, in response to, let's say a killing of a person by a by a cop will be will be uh, memorialized by a bunch of flowers in the location and, sure. and I'd so say that's similar it, you know in in um in, so in the cities we we have that just recently though i'm done uh would you mind if i uh throw a question up out to john before we continue dread sure cool so, John, what do you got? I saw your comment. Well, it's a cultural change that's happened during my lifetime in this part of the world, because we used to be very private about our deceased. Mm. And as children, we didn't get taken to funerals even. It was just a thing that adults did. They went along. It was all very quietly done. They came back, and we got on with our lives. But then in 1998... Princess Diana died. And there was a sort of oh, outpouring of grief. Mm -hmm. sure. And right. you could have seen the pyramids of flowers that were laid outside Buckingham Palace mm -hmm. by people. And on the actual location in Paris that she died. Yes, and probably yeah. outside Kensington Palace, where she was living, too. Mm -hmm. And so and this was the American media, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the American media, too, yes, about yes. the displays of the flowers and all that in, in England. Yes, sure. yes. I know you, you probably like our royal family more than we do. <laughs> 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 but uh, the, the thing is, that seems to have started this ball rolling. And now we do right. see bunches of flowers at junctions where people have wrap themselves around a tree or had some terrible accident. Right. John, right. just to weigh in on that a little bit more, because it got, it became sort of a genuine means of emotion with flowers, yes. but then there was commemorative coins. And then yes. like magazines that were like, here's the lifestyle yes. of Deanna. Here's the pictures of her yeah. final yeah. moments. Here's the pictures of her funeral. Here's the pictures of her crying yes. family, each for like $17 and 99 cents. Cause there's an upsell on everything. And it starts yes. to get a little creepy. Like, the commercial it's yes. too commercial and mm. i and that's one agenda like that's people trying to make a profit but i feel like there's also a other identity there's also other agendas based on I ideas and ideologies that ha see an opportunity to slowly sneak themselves into the cultural uh I guess, mainstay yeah. I, yeah. I, do, I, don't know, I don't know whether the stoic british nature has has modified mutated into something more Emotional? I don't know. Mm. Daughter five, go for it. Yeah, you could say it's, it's capitalism. Uh, capitalism. And since we have a guest who's not from a capitalistic country, maybe we should ask Tim. Yeah, Swedish uh, Steve. How do you does... have? Yeah, Swedish uh, Steve. Uh, you live in a socialist slash communist country, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> now that's I say that that way because in America, in America, in America, in America, you say socialism and they think communism. Yeah. So yeah. What can you tell us a little bit about the socialism in your country? But you think I'm T five socialist, so. Yeah. 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 So um, how, how we deal with death? Yeah. How do you guys deal with death in general? <laughs> Very differently, but uh, uh, the typical Swede. <laughs> Yeah, will not um, be very public about it. Is there a King it's... Carl m a Memorial Day? Y yeah, nobody cares about those. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, w w we have um, 
King Carl. Uh, There's a, the so there is a Swedish royal family, and you can like. Bump yeah, the but nobody up. cares about them. <laughs> <laughs> like, they are just a joke. Um, well, you didn't get out the guillotines for them. That's one thing. That's you that's know. an improvement. No, uh, yeah. but, but there are been... emotion that he should be. Uh, the royal family should be under the historical department of the Swedish government. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, when there is a sudden loss in Sweden, like, uh, what would be the typical um, assurances co given by the media, or would there be displays? Like, what does that look like culturally over there? It depends on, on um, if the media catch it up, it's because it's a slow news day. Mm. Um, I mean, we, we lost some, uh, I think she was a princess or something, but uh, it was the same time as the um, uh, Black Lives Matter riots. Mm. So uh, they didn't type about write about it. Wow, I see. Um, but I have to say about this, that uh, this grieving uh, outwardly and, and uh, making profit of it, it's all boiled down to social media. Yeah. In my opinion. I see it as an opportunity for somebody to get either more likes, more money, or more attention, which is yeah. basically, yeah. George, John, what do you got? Well, if you go to other countries like Ghana, for example. Oh, they make a really big meal out of a death. In fact, relatives can come and live with you as a, you know, you're the, the ancestor of the deceased in order to help you grieve. And actually they're sponging off you. You know, they, they found themselves somewhere to live free of charge for the next several months because they're helping you to grieve. And it goes to the extreme that for the ceremony, which might be some months later, you can actually hire professional whalers. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's hear awesome. that's com common in Arabic countries as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have them too in America. We oh, do. do we? We yeah, do. I've seen them on, on can Fiverr. We, can we just stop this for a little bit? I want to I wanna pause on just this topic <laughs> for a little bit. So Sweetest uh -huh. Steve, for whatever reason, you were down a rabbit hole on the internet where you're looking at American Fiverr professional grievers. Could you, could you inform me so I know what's going on in my own country? What's going on here? So for five bucks, I can get somebody to cry at my, my funeral? It's more than that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> do you want the premium package? Uh, oh, it might cost you 10 bucks, huh? Yeah, he, he will. Uh, <laughs> the one I was checking on, um, he was like um, claiming to your casket and wailing and um, everything like that. And this would be like a stranger that nobody else knows about. Yeah. Be, oh, there's some interesting ideas there. Dread Pirate, I see you have a, a hand raise. What's up? Yeah, well, you know, I guess in uh, sort of um, rounding out my thoughts about this is is uh, actually a continuation of uh, something you were saying, um, like uh, the idea of my bringing up this uh, uh, thing about uh, crosses uh, lining the highways and byways of our of our province. Um, it's not about going out there with a bat and, and a shovel and, and taking these things up and getting rid of them. It's about trying to figure out a better way for people to, um, you know, process their grief, right? As opposed to wearing it on their on their sleeves for everyone to see, um, because in sen in a sense, you know, and certainly the media has um, got a lot of responsibility in this. Is the enabling of people's continued uh, continued grief and the, um, you know, again, almost commercializing it and uh, making it, again, a spectacle. I'm also um, going to, Dredd, I'm also going to throw this out too. I know it's something that you're not saying, but you want to say, but like, if this was a Pasifarian that died on the side of the road, there's no chance that there's going to be a picket of the spaghetti, sp flying spaghetti right. monster that will be tolerated by people on the side of the road. They're going to be like, exactly. take that down, exactly. keep the crosses up. But no, my religious icons are up, but everyone else's aren't. And so right. that we know you, we live in You a don't world. see anything. Yeah, you don't see any Muslim uh, iconography 
or Buddhist iconography, uh, but certainly, or, or Wiccans. Right. Uh, you don't see pentagrams up there for every Wiccan that died at this side of the road uh, exactly. because of an accident. So, uh, exactly. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Uh, George, you had a comment. What's up? Yeah, I wanted to mention that there is a, about professional mourners, there is a tradition in the Jewish religion of that. And really? um, there, there, you can also hire somebody to sit by the, by the dead body for, for an appropriate period of time. But the, the, about the mourners, there is a, a, a comedy video on YouTube that I can recommend showing a couple of Jewish mourners uh, talking about um, uh, m being afraid of missing the bus home after the funeral. Uh, hey, listen, you guys, we have, <laughs> we have seven minutes left in the show and I would be, I would be very embarrassed if I didn't subject Swedish Steve to the same questions that I applied to Isaiah when he came on and we knew he was a Christian. So I do want to throw this out to Swedish Steve. You had mentioned that you're an atheist. Would you mind telling me why you're an atheist? And, and maybe we can just touch on that. Why are you an atheist? Because the idea of um, ignoring the world is not a possibility for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a strong believer in uh, what Marx said about uh, religion and uh, that it's uh, an opium for the people. It clouds the mind and make them artificial happy, give them an answer to everything they can't understand. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh man dread do you even have uh oh wait john comment yeah not di directly related to what steve said but part of this problem is because we we think of death as a taboo subject we're, right. we're not prepared to talk about it prior mm -hmm. to it happening we're not prepared to believe that it's going to happen to us you know <laughs> and really that's psychologically very bad. We should actually accept this is a fact and prepare ourselves for it and prepare the, the family and the friends. And, yeah. yes. you know, come I to terms with it. I like it. Round table. How, what's the best way to grieve in a situation like that? I just recently lost a family member uh, to COVID and um, it was one of my aunts and um, uh, maybe we can talk more about that later on a future show, but um, we are taking our time to process it privately within the family to give respect as we just have the logistics mm -hmm. of how we distribute, you know, her belongings and like making sure that her family's okay and her, and her sons and daughters are all right. Uh, we didn't make it a, a public thing for clout or for sympathy. We're really doing our best to try to respect, you know, just the ongoings of life being a process and death being a process. And yeah. uh, um, so no, no flags for us, but it was never a condition for our part. So our, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get in more details later, but basically we try to keep it private, try to keep it respectful, uh, because I'm sure she would want the same thing too. And, uh, dread yeah. what would be, what'd be your ideas of best ways to, uh, grieve? Well, and you know, and uh, the, the difference I see, um, often is of course what's going on. So if it's a sudden, if it's a sudden death, yeah. um, no, no preamble like a car accident. No. Um, it tends to have uh, a larger impact, and and people are far more out of sorts. Um, my my mom, on the other hand, she's got Alzheimer's, and it's a slow, gradual decline. Where in in fact, uh, the mourning process has already, or the grieving process has already started for me, because you know I. I see that my mom is declining and that eventually she'll be gone. Right. So in a sense, I'm being prepared uh, for that just in my relationship with her. So I, again, it's about having tools, most tools to deal with these emotional crises uh, that we should be better equipped with um, in order to, to deal with it in either circumstance, whether it's sudden or gradual. And I agree, we have better tools. So we should really spend, especially in the situation where two people die and one can't afford a giant cross and the other one can, like we have better right. tools to be able to do stuff like that. Doubter five, yeah. how are you gonna grieve when I die? 
<laughs> uh, well, given our age difference, it's probably going to be the other way around. But I think uh, no, you know, it's I live to... I live fast and loose. You don't know about me. Uh, when, you're when burning the candle at both I, ends. Is that yeah? It? I got I got some I got some black hairs to burn still. Yeah. 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 No, be, I think it's that'll important. That'll be awake, won't it? What? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, John, what you just... Oh, be awake. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. Daughter five. No, it's it's important to process it. Uh, the last thing you want to do is repress it, and yeah. uh, and ignore it. You want to process it, get through it, and also take the message from it that you need to engage with those that are still alive while they're alive. Yes. Uh, and and resolve any problems that you may have with them so that you can enjoy their company while they're here. And that's so yeah, much but, more yeah. important. Yeah. It's very true. Uh, Swedish Steve, any comments on best ways to grieve? Uh, no, but uh, I would suggest uh, to take up the, the tradition of Etterstupa. You're going to have to translate that. You know that. Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's um, when you're old and uh, getting a burden to uh, your village or something, you go up to the tallest mountain and just jump off so i forgot to mention that swedish <laughs> steve it comes from a viking culture just a quick thing in sweden this surprised me there's no word swedish let me finish the story there's no word for please you just say thanks so like if you need water you just take water and be like talk 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 thoughts and talk you just take it and you say thank you and it's such a completely different dynamic there's no excuse me wow. can i have this can i oh can i get in here it's like no you take it and you say thank you and you just move on and that's it's like better to it. ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's no yeah, asking either it's like can i take your village please thank you all right i appreciate it yeah. <laughs> village pack. guys uh we're nearing the end of the show uh what i like to do is um a little bit of shout outs we'll start with john richards you got on so many different shows what would you recommend that we check out before next week Rethought productions channel on youtube nice all my shows are on there wonderful free thought productions youtube dread pirate what do you got for us what do we recommend well uh this week of course and last week i wasn't able to stream i'm in a remote location and dependent on my my phone and uh local connections and that's just not enough so what i would suggest people pick up the portable atheist which is an anthology of writings put together by christopher hitchens who introduces each um, piece of writing, and it, it goes from Lucretius to uh, Plato to Aristotle to Einstein, uh, Karl Marx, um, uh, Stephen Hawking. It, it's just a, a huge anthology of people writing with atheism or secularism as the uh, subject. So it's a great book. George Brown, would you recommend that we check out anything before the next week rolls in? Um, no, I have no recommendation this week. Thank you. Totally fine. I do have a recommendation, and it is Zed Bars. Brought to you guys. Actually, I just got a, an Zed announcement. Bar. Zed Bars just sent me a tweet. They said they denounce everything they say. They are not an atheist supporter <laughs> show. I never saw that happening, so we no more Zed Bars. By the way, this package is empty anyway. We'll take it all back, but now I'm at it's a loss. It's all an illusion. Now I'm at a loss because they said they didn't like atheism. I'm like, atheism? What is that, and what is it even about? Doubt five can help me out with that oh yeah but i think we should give a swedish steve a, oh my bad my uh, bad shot. my bad swedish steve is there anything that you'd recommend we check out before next week uh reality nice <laughs> <I hear. laughs> and in my reality i don't know what atheism is and what it's all about doubter five can help me out yeah, I happen to have a book that addresses that directly. It's Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. It basically is a book of uh, counter to religious apologetics. So if you need something for your atheism arsenal for arguments and stuff, uh, I would check that book out. Uh, also, uh, just go to digitalfreethought.com slash blog, which is my blog, which basically you can read the entire book in the articles that I have listed on the blog. So just go check that out. It, that part is free. I uh, also have a YouTube channel. Uh, search for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And if you have any questions for our show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheists.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you are having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we will see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. in my head that told me atheism was true.